Hello guys, uh, I think we have some problems with um, the picture now. I don't know why it's happening actually, but anyway, oh, welcome to Bone Triplets. So let me just check what's going on here quickly. No, it doesn't work for some reason. I probably have to restore the stream because it just doesn't work as expected. Uh, Prom Knight says a big problem. Yes, uh, it is actually. So uh, I will take like several minutes to fix it and we'll restart the stream in um, uh, probably two minutes or something like that. Sorry for that. All right, so I hope it should be better now. Uh, I'm not sure if you can still hear and see me. Just let me know in chat quickly. Uh, I think now you should see the normal board and it's not blinking. And yeah, Prom Knight says the technical difficulties. Um, so is it is it back now? Just let me know, please. And Albing says the perfect audio and video. Well, I'm not sure if it is perfect, but at least uh, there is no this blinking shit anymore. All right, sorry for that. I have no idea how this um, uh, showed up actually. Uh, so we'll try to understand what happened and uh, we'll try to do everything to prevent it uh, the next time. All right, uh, so we lost like almost 10 minutes because of it, right? No worries, I will just extend uh, this one. But uh, right after me, there is another event. So we'll see, all right? We will see. So just as usual, I want to play several games against people I've never ever played before, uh, and then just go to accepting challenges one by one. All right, and the first one coming from um, the guy from Paraguay, Christian Martinez, is already quite challenging because this is a three minute challenge. So I have to be quite fast, um, which is usually a problem because I'm basically yeah, trying to explain a lot. So, Camp Spy, please make a move. Yeah, Prom Knight, you can try to refresh the page, I don't know. Because on my end, it, it says for now that uh, there is no problem, but I'm not quite sure. Camp Spy is not going to respond, I guess, so I'll just abort this one. We don't have a lot of time. So Dirks is the next one, so I'll accept that challenge. Three plus two is, uh, yeah, a fair time control. So we have some increments, which means uh, there is not that big risk of losing on time. So I have a strange feeling that my opponent is not going to respond. What's going on? Probably people just went away right after there was a problem with, you know, this blinking. From Knight says maybe Chess24 has an issue. What kind of issue actually so I can start the game? Basically, I, I don't know. That is strange. So you mean that my opponent cannot make a move, but they don't even uh, write anything on chat about it. So I believe they're just not, they're just not there. All right, abort. Let's have a look if uh, anyone has a chance to play. 
So let's see. Rook SR. We have not played before, so we'll accept. Play ambush black pieces. By the way, there is a perfect um, switching of colors. No, actually, yeah, those guys were not there, simply. Pity thing. All right, nevertheless, we have managed to start the very first game after some struggling. And we have Rui Lopez right from the start. Classic direction with Bishop A4. And I assume White will play C3 now. And if White now plays H3, we definitely enter the main, main direction. So, D4, no. Uh, so, I would say it is the main sideline compared to H3. So, D5, Knight, A5. And let me remember, there is a c6 move, but if I play c6 immediately, there is b4 attacking my knight, and then c6 drops. Um, but it's not the main issue. So if I play c6 immediately, as far as I remember, white can play h3 attacking my bishop, and then if my bishop goes back to d7, there is knight takes e5 tactics. So. I prefer a queen to c8 move here. The one which was, if I'm not mistaken, introduced by Romanishan many years ago. The idea being just to protect the c6 from behind to prepare that move and to avoid these tactics with h3, bishop d7, knight takes c5, which is after queen c8 not possible because bishop has this d8 square. All right. Okay, so bishop g5, not quite sure what white is doing here. Probably fighting for d5 square in advance. Uh, bring the bishop to that g5 square, but I'm, I don't think it's a good idea anyway. So let's just play this move first. Undermining d5, that's the main plan anyway. Once white's pawn is there, now knight can go to c4. Pretty good position. Well, c4 was weakened, right? My knight just occupies this one. Of course, after b4, it's possible to go to b7, but why on earth would I play knight b7 if I have this great active c4 position, right? Not that b7 is very bad, but it's much worse than c4. Okay, now I can just take on d2, I guess. And take on d5. Looks very good. I can even win a pawn if I want. Is it really the move that wins a pawn though? So if I take on d5 with the knight after ed5, then bishop goes to e4. Maybe not so pleasant actually. Yeah, so probably it's better not to take on d5 in that position. It may be risky because indeed I weaken lots of light squares and this may backfire simply. Yeah, I guess after e takes d5, I will just play something simple. Oh no, why decided to do something really strange here? So I expected e takes d5 instead. Why played rook to b1? This is very strange to me. Now I just grab there and play bishop f5, right? So just winning everything. God damn. Don't understand the logic behind rook b1 at all. Even if it is a mouse sleep or something, then what white wanted to play? So like rook to c1 doesn't make much sense to me. Okay. I can do whatever I want now. Position is absolutely winning. The only thing here is not to blunder checkmate on h7 or something. So, yeah. Okay, so let's just centralize everything. Rook e8, rook d8, then something like d5 at some point. 
maybe next move yeah in this particular case i guess it makes sense so d5 now the rook goes to d8 supporting that pawn from behind yeah e4 is the threat more or less so e4 knight d4 takes on d3 takes on c6 also winning for black i mean everything is now winning here rook to b1 was very strange and then after c d5 e d5 was the only move and then the question was could i take on d5 because in many cases uh in this line white sacrifices that pawn not necessarily in that position but uh as a general idea white wants to sacrifice that pawn to get pair of bishops probably and to use the weakness of uh light squares in black's camp and that position of course it was far away from that but still rook to c1 okay so the question from prom knight andre could you make a training tuesday about royal lopez exchange well actually there were two episodes about fisher's uh royal lopez and they were both in royal lopez exchanged so it's not necessarily about uh, Relapis exchanged, but definitely included that line. So the question about my predictions in Carlson versus uh, Firuja, I still don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, surname correctly yeah but I think Carlson should win anyway I really do believe in Carlson and his abilities okay now we have different options uh, I think d4 is not the worst one just d4 and then maybe even d3 Starting active operations in the center, we're ready, and this should lose completely after this. So queen e4 was another blunder. Yeah, so what to say, um, my friend, you should work on tactics, because you blunder a lot, and in this particular case, it was the main reason why you lost the game. Okay, so let's get back to that moment where I captured on uh, d5. So cd5 was played. I'm really wondering if I can take on d5 easily here. It shouldn't be a simple position for black whatsoever after bishop b4. But you know what? I can even try something like that. It's a positional exchange sacrifice. But, I mean, even here black has... Uh, very obvious compensation in the form of pair of bishops control over light squares and uh, potentially very good center all right so even that is possible but what if black doesn't want to sacrifice anything uh, is it possible to keep this extra pawn without much problems maybe something tactical like queen c4 is possible here although i have bad feelings about this move so there is something like bishop to g5 attacking my knight but then my knight can grab that pawn on c3 uh, in which case i have no idea something like bishop h7 followed by queen c2 check followed by bishop e7 is possible should be calculated at least um i don't know maybe something like bishop e6 here but again if bishop goes away somewhere then my knight is under pressure maybe it's not a big deal actually maybe it's fine uh but uh, i wasn't sure that's what I mean. So definitely take, taking on d5 was necessary in this position. Otherwise, I just take on e4 twice. And even if I don't win this exchange like it happened after rook to b1, I get pair of bishops, extra pawn, and very strong center. All right. So it's absolutely lost. Okay, let's have a look if we have other challenges from uh, people I've never, ever played before. Uh, just to follow the rules, I introduced myself. Yes, here is uh, one guy from Spain. Hope he is online, so just accept it. 
And I'm playing with black pieces now. We play Thrym in the game. Uh, obviously, <coughs> it's gonna be challenging only in case my opponent makes the first move and actually yeah, starts the game. All right. So my opponent is there. It's good. Let's try Philidor. That's a bad one, I know. Much worse than knight to c6, but still playable thing. Okay, queen e2. I have seen this already. Somebody played uh, the thing against me, I guess. All right, let's keep on developing pieces. Just centralization. Nothing wrong with that, I guess. But at some point, if white doesn't capture my bishop on e6, I may want to consider something like bishop g4. For now, though, my main idea was just to castle here, actually. To make this position not so boring. Uh, let's take there. Now d5 should give me a clear play against the isolated pawn. Uh, but I'm just wondering how to implement that. To take on c4 first and then play d5 or play d5 immediately. If I play d5 immediately, there is something not so clear after bishop b5. So yeah, let's get rid of that bishop first. And now d5 should be just slightly better for black, I guess. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. We'll see. So ed5, the only potential problem is with my f7 actually, so I wanted to take with the queen, but now I'd say after queen d5, rook d5, there's something like knight, sorry, uh, yeah, knight to g5. Maybe queen d5, queen d5, knight d5, knight to g5, and then something like rook to d7, but then rook gets to uh, d e8 check, knight goes to d8. Um... Maybe annoying with such a rook there. Yeah, don't like it. So I will take with the knight then. Okay, and now I can play f6 if I want. I can also consider knight to b6. I guess for now, it's important to restrict opponent's knight. So to eliminate knight g5 and knight e5 possibilities. Right, yeah. Looks logical. Queen a4. Now I guess I can play simply knight b6, attacking the queen, and then uh, taking d4, right? Let's see. It depends on where the queen goes. If it goes to, say, uh, b3, I definitely can take there. Maybe I cannot. I, I'm not sure. It's all not so simple to understand now. For some reason, but I have to play faster, so let's do it. Let's see where it goes to start with. There are many options. Yeah, there may be a problem after queen to b3. If I take on d4, let's say knight d4, queen d4, rook d1 is super annoying. Because if my queen goes to, say, b4, there's queen e6 check, my rook on d8 may be captured. Yeah, probably. It's not that great idea. All right, then we will just bring the bishop to d6 next move and everything's going to be fine. In this case, though, I'll try this move. So knight to b4, creating a sort of knight to c2 at the same time trying to exchange queens, which is, uh, I think, a logical idea because we are playing against isolated pawns the fewer pieces we have on the board easier it is for black uh, to attack the isolated pawn at the same time uh, it's harder for white to organize counterplay after queen e2 i just develop my bishop to d6 preventing bishop f4 intending rook to e8 and if there is a3 i will put my knight on d5 uh, which is typical for things like this I mean, when you play against isolated pawn, you want to blockade it. So the knight belongs to that blockading position. All right, what's going on here? Let's take with the pawn. I missed that after queen d6, there's queen to e8. Maybe it was fine, actually, but just didn't want to risk it. 
we now entered yeah the time trouble both of us i still believe black's position is uh much more pleasant because of the pawn structure because of that bishop which is quite poor and i don't see how white is going to attack me here and at the same time i can actually make some progress here with my pawns so let's just bring them to motion gradually and achieve something there like bring in my pieces clip probably knight f4 with stroner right yeah, knight f4 immediately with stroner okay uh, so I won on time, I guess, um, but my position is already quite good here, I guess. So somewhere here after h4, maybe knight f4 immediately here, even not playing h4 or something, right after bishop went away. So like knight f4 followed by queen g4 was strong, I'm not sure, but even the way I played here was quite acceptable. Yeah, here I missed the option of playing knight f4 immediately, because if g takes f4 then... Queen g4 wins on the spot, uh, which means queen has to go away somewhere, and there is knight e2, knight takes c1, something like that, right? So, yeah. I mean, after knight to b6, I guess it was not the best move of mine. Uh, just a second, let's go back to... Yeah, after knight to b6, queen to b3 deserves serious attention. So knight to b, queen to b5 gave me another tempo, I think. It was not very well... Queen to b3 is logical. You fight for d5 square, and at the same time, since I've played f6, I weakened e6, so you control that square. Uh, and the point here is that if I take there, then you take. And after queen takes d4, I think rook to d1 is super annoying for black. So I didn't want to play that at all. Something like that. I mean, if I play something like that, there's queen e6 check. That's really not so good. <laughs> uh, if not losing, um, I don't think it's losing, but uh, yeah, because after rook to d1, for example, I can I can play some like queen g4. I'm still okay controlling this e6, but it was nervous. Uh, so queen b3, I wanted to play something like this here, bishop to d6, same story, but uh, now you have a tempo to play something active, maybe something like that. I don't know. To pep this position a bit, maybe knight e4. The idea of knight c5 or knight takes d6, because the way you played was actually quite pleasant for black now. As you can see, everything is static, and that is exactly what black needs here. All right, uh, so let us continue. Thanks for the game. Is there anyone else I've never ever played before? Let's have a look. Yeah, there is one opponent except now we're going just to come back to normal uh, order of challenges one by one so e4 again the question if my opponent actually makes the first move it's probably the main challenge this time Ah, God damn it. Yep, here we go. Scandinavian. We're playing what? Three? Simply three minutes? Or with some sort of increment? Like one minute or one second, sorry. Yeah, sort of one or two seconds per move. Okay, that's nice. So, this is typical for Scandinavian. Uh, E6. As I remember, it's possible to put the queen on e2 here. One of the options for sure. 
All right. Now we can actually bring the bishop to d2. And simply castle, right? Oh, let's castle. That's a good thing to do. And I have a feeling that I've played something like that in the real game, in the tournament game, I mean. Feels very good for white. So right now I have a threat of playing f5. Swinging that guy. Black has to decide which side to castle. I think castle and lawn should be played. In which case, again, we can continue with the h4 or something like that. b5, okay. Probably playable. I don't know. What happens if I take on e6, then take on g6, then take on e6 with the check? I know that taking on b5 with the bishop, cb5 and knight b5 will be bad because if queen takes c2. Mm, anyway, there was strange feeling here. People are saying never played you before. Yeah, I know, but I, I usually play only three games. And even within those three games, I try to follow the order in which challenges came. All right. So. Then after this first three games, and this is the third already, I just take challenges one by one in order how they came. All right, so now h4 comes to my mind as the main move. So I want just to play h5 trap in that bishop. I have a feeling that black should play some like b4 right now. Otherwise, I'll just take that bishop. Okay, a5. Okay, I think I have to be faster with my attack here. So h5 already traps the bishop, right? After a4, I'll just take that bishop. Black will also take my bishop on b3. And then I'll take on f7, rook f7, knight f7. There may be a problem with that pawn on a2 potentially. So does it make sense for me just to take on a4 now or take on e6 first? Yeah, taking on e6 looks pretty, pretty good. Let's do it. So my main idea here is just to keep position closed on the queen side to prevent opponent's attack. It's anyway the exchange of bishops, but I think this way it will be a bit safer for me. Of course, in a normal situation it should be calculated, but I, I just have no time to calculate everything here. Or at least something, because we're playing blitz three minutes to each player, so... I just... Uh, Calculate a bit and trust my intuition, which is not always the best partner, but in this particular case, I think I, I've done everything correctly. So look, I have extra material already, and this position on the king side should be super simple to, to crush. Like g5 should be winning easily, I suppose. Just open in the H file quickly. All right, this is not the same, so I can just take. I mean, it's not the same as before. Just take there and B C three was was lost because of F seven. Now I simply have extra minor piece, right? And no compensation, no visible compensation at least. So B three is the last trick, I suppose. No. Black decided not to play b3. All right, it's probably the decisive mistake because now I have a tempo to prevent all these things. And yeah, what's going on here? Something like b3. Yeah, let's just. How to prevent it correctly? I mean, b3, we just play a3, right? Right. Let's just play rook e1. It's not dangerous at all. Yeah, just a3 immediately. 
Now we can take a pawn, we can play bishop b4, we can take on e6. I mean, I will choose this one. Every move that I mentioned wins. The bishop b4 is one of them. Let's take that pawn. In addition to that rook, looks good. What? Rook b8? Aha. Uh -huh. b2 is hanging. Okay, let's just take on h6, right? Uh, should be good enough. Everything with tempi. So, checkmates with the second queen. Uh, yeah. So what to say uh, here? I suppose instead of playing a five, it was interesting to try before to fight for e four square. Although it was not the guarantee. After knight to a four, for example, something like <coughs> bishop to e four may lead to g5. So if knight goes away, I just grab the bishop, right? And if bishop takes on h1, I grab that knight, and the bishop is still hanging. Also looks pretty bad for black. For example, after this move, I can do what? But uh, it's still playable, though. Absolutely. I mean, if I take on g7, the rook may go away somewhere. Maybe even king g7 is possible. Um, I can think of taking on d7 then playing queen g4 because if I play queen g4 immediately there is knight takes f6. So taking on d7 first, then queen to g4 forces black to play g6. Then I can play queen to g5 intending queen h6. So this forces black to play that. But I don't see anything uh, further. So if I play queen h6, there is rook to g8. Yeah, white has an attack, but it's not necessarily that dangerous for black. Maybe black is fine here. I'm not sure, but it deserves serious attention. And after a5, uh, h5, a4, bishop e6, I suppose black should have tried bishop takes c2 at very least. All right. So taking that pawn as well and preventing the opening of the h file. So that is something I didn't really uh, consider here. I thought I would be anyway better, but maybe I was wrong. Maybe it's not so simple. Indeed, after king takes c2 and f takes c6, I'm not sure that I'm even better if I play g5, then knight goes to d5. So pawn structure is even better for black here, I guess. So bishop c2 deserves serious attention, in which case I could have captured on f7, rook f7, and then king c2. So what's going on here? I have extra pawn, but yeah, files are closed against the king, and you have some, some time to play before b3 and stuff. All right. Okay. Uh, let's go one by one. Uh, Azurian 77 is the next, so we'll accept that one. Playing with black pieces. Okay, gonna be challenging stuff. So, as far as I understand, there will be just as usual this ready thing. Alright, alright. Not ready, some people call it like King's Indian attack. The knight going to d2. To me, everything which starts with knight of 3 g3, bishop g2 is right. <laughs> it's easier to remember the names of the openings this way. Now, however, we have something uh, like Stonewall. Almost. So to finish the pattern, I need to bring my knights from c6 somewhere and then it will be just a stone wall and play c6 with the pawn, I mean. Okay, here I will just capture this way. I guess it's wrong. This pawn structure should be quite good for black. Now let's just take on e5. The spawn on e5 will be a problem. Uh, I can attack it immediately, but f4... Bishop f4, I don't know, rook f5, is it really worth playing? Rook f5, bishop h3, rook takes e5, bishop f4, rook h5, bishop g4. No, my rook can be trapped there. Now, instead, I will just play this move. 
preparing queen to c7. Uh, there is a question from Mictel. Andre, have you watched the banter? But no. I, I I don't I don't watch chess things nowadays at all. <laughs> PT fact of having regular jobs in no time. F four. All right. Queen B six. Check now. Yeah. The Main question here is, should I take a basso here? Because if I do, what anyway captures with a pawn and then that pawn goes to f4. So I have a feeling that it's better to keep to keep this pawn structure, in which case that bishop is limited and it is limited way better if compared to the situation after the exchange. Moreover, I like this, you know, two pairs of uh, doubled pawns for both sides on the e-file. So, okay, now, oh gosh, that was a mistake already. <laughs> I'm really bad. Bishop takes e4 was a punishment for this stupid bishop d7 move. Yeah, now I think black is fine completely. Yeah, bishop d7 was so stupid. I mean, if I wanted to play bishop d7, I should have done this in, well before I play queen b6. Without queen b6, it was okay. It was absolutely playable. Oh, god damn it. Now, that is just what... You know, happens to me quite often nowadays. I just blunder something really obvious and simple. Bad. Simply bad thing. Okay, let's grab some space. If we have something here as black, I think it's not much. But anyway, we have... A bit more space than our opponent, so it should be uh, slightly more pleasant to play. Okay. Now we can use the fact that King is on F2 and play G5. Is it a good idea for us to do? Or it's only something that may potentially help our opponent. I'm not sure. I don't know. I would actually try to keep this position as it is on the king side and then try something on the queen side and in the center. Of course, it would be ideal to play d4 at some point, but I'm not sure if it is doable in the nearest future. Okay. Now, what about rook d8? Like, Maybe I want to play d4, maybe. That rook on a2 is a bit misplaced for now. It's again very important not to blunder this bishop e4 again at some point. I mean, right now it's not a threat or something, but it can be possible at any moment. Should just take that into account. Okay, so how to play d4? How to prepare it? Hard to accomplish, but let's try to do that somehow. Or maybe we should play a4 instead. <laughs> this is also an option. So like both rooks on the a file. And then what? And then a4. All right, g4 changes the situation a bit. 
So white wants to play f5. Is it that dangerous for black? Maybe a nine. Okay, so let's just give this check. And play king e7 to be better prepared. Oh, by the way, d4 was possible after king g2. I uh, have a feeling that I missed something really cool after d4. Maybe. No, d4, cd4, cd4, rook d4 was not possible anyway. Okay, let's forget about that. And now I suppose a4 should be played. And rook. Still not sure if I'm getting somewhere, actually. Still not sure if I'm getting anywhere. But my position doesn't look that bad either, so... I don't know. First of all, I want to make sure that after f5 I control the 7th rank. But g5 may be played at some point. Um, okay, let's bring the rook to a7. Let's play h6 here. All right, this way. Didn't expect that at, at all. Okay. The position is quite hard to assess, actually, and we are both in a time trouble now. But I have a feeling that my opponent's keen is a bit misplaced here. So, let's see, there's this check. Okay, this should be good for me, I suppose. Yeah, should be lost for my opponent already. It's anyway lost, but I misplayed it, which is not surprising. I mean, I'm misplaying every every position in every game. Um, so what happened here? So the ending was really unclear. I mean, at some point I had a feeling that uh, I somehow outplayed my opponent, for example, here d4 was possible, but then I understood that that was actually wrong. So I'm not getting anywhere with this d4. Uh, so after king g2 and my king e7, um, g5 was interesting just to switch off my bishop somehow, at least to try to do that. But in that case, I wanted to undermine this uh, g5 with the h6. The question is if I am in time, because if I play, for example, h6, uh, you're not forced to take, right? So you can uh, play bishop g4 here. Followed by king to h3, and my bishop can be anyway trapped. So if I take there, for example, I can protect it with the rook, but I open the f file, and now you can use it. So this is really dangerous for black if you play some like rook f1 and rook to f6. Which is absolutely unclear. I mean, maybe this bishop h4 idea was completely wrong because of that, right? Because of that g5. g5 definitely deserved attention here. And uh, yeah, after bishop to h4, probably could have even played king to g1 to. To, to play it really safe, to avoid anything that is uh, about this d4 and opening that diagonal. I don't know, but g5 indeed looked very interesting to me at least. 
So as for the rest, everything was very interesting. So the only thing I don't, I, I, I don't think that in general this approach with knight to e5 gives you something. So if you are playing for a win, you probably should consider playing something else. All right, next game on M. Also with the increments, so not that risky. But the question is if my opponent is there. Yeah, my opponent is there. And most likely we're going to play closed uh, Catalan after some transposition. Yeah, because Anam is always playing the same openings with both colors. So it's quite easy to predict what's going to happen. So now we're going to play d5 next move. And indeed we have the closed Catalan. Knight to e5, bishop goes to a6, exerting some pressure on c4, and intending to play knight to d7, knight f to d7 to attack that knight. That is what I usually do here. Now if knight goes away, I grab the pawn on c4. If instead white captures on d5, cd5, or something like that, then, well, position is being simplified. And I guess black has no problems in that case. Yeah, something like that is absolutely acceptable for black. I even think that black is slightly better here because of, um, you know, both bishops are potentially active while white has a problem with that light screwed Catalanian bishop, which is, yeah, struggling to, to get some activity. So the only way to open that diagonal is to play something like e4, in which case, uh, well, there is a problem with the isolated pawn then, potentially. That's why I like this position. Simple to play. All right, let's play queen d7. Black is controlling everything here. No problems. I'm not preventing queen g5, it was not a threat. Just using time to give my king some room uh, in case there is a problem with the back rank. Usually there is no problem with the back rank. A3. Well, what white is going to do? To play something like before, well, I'm fine with that. Let it be. I'll probably even force that a bit. So I, I, I play bishop d6 to play queen e7 to attack that pawn on a3 and to force b4. But why decided to play b4? Not waiting for that. And I find it great because now I have this square. It's a serious weakness in white's camp. Maybe bishop c4 was not the best way to use that square. Maybe the smartest way was to play bishop e7, rook d8, knight e8, knight e6, knight c4, but it took so much time. I thought it would be better for me to put the bishop there. Moreover, my bishop is somewhat needed here uh, to control light squares after this changes. So now indeed my bishop is needed on d5. To blockade the pawn d4. Should I put my bishop immediately there? But then after the exchange, there will be no isolated pawn anymore. So it's smarter to control that square additionally. Uh, probably to play bishop e7. Let's have a look at the tactics there. So bishop e7. Or maybe bishop b8, I'm not sure. Bishop e7 is more logical with the idea of bishop g5 or bishop f6 or both. Well, let's have a look at tactics. Bishop e7, d5. Bishop captures d5, queen d4, bishop f6. Looks like everything is under control. So let's just play this. So I want to play bishop d5 next move. And now it starts making sense to put the bishop on c4, right? I mean, bishop c4 idea is justified. 
after his changes of the bone structure. Bishop is being relocated to blockade in position on d5. Okay. Good. I mean, especially after rook to d1, I have to play this. I see no problems with that. Maybe bishop to b3 was smarter to attack the rook first. But I don't think that that rook is so good on d1. So after f4, position is slightly more weakened on the king side. That's why I provoked that move. I need more weaknesses than just on d4 because normally it's not enough. And when white plays f4, this means the king is no longer that safe. Okay, let's take there. Let's put the rook on d8 now. Maybe I just want to take on c1 and take on d4. Who knows? Maybe not. We will see. d5 doesn't work because bishop is hanging, so everything is under control still. And... Yeah, blight squares are terrible in the white's camp. Bishop is very bad. All the pawns are in dark squares, limiting its activity. Yeah, but... It's still maybe not enough to win the game. That's the problem. Now I want to put my rook on c4, but there is queen a8 check, king goes to h7, d5 right after that, bishop takes b2, rook takes b2, I take on d5, yeah, I win a pawn in that case, so let's put the rook on c4. Okay, so... Let's just play g6, prevent an f5, and put the king on g7. Gradually improving the position, move by move. Uh, all right, my opponent lost on time, and this position is far from being lost for white, but from a practical point of view, of course, black is dominating because only black can win, only black attacks here. It's a classic example of the isolated pawn when opponent uh, failed to... Uh, create counterplay earlier in the game so now all the pieces are bound uh, to this pawn and are quite passive uh, but anyway it's not so simple to win so it takes time usually and usually this pawn is not enough so black should find something else so maybe to play g5 at the right moment to improve the position even more and then play g5 to provoke a new weakness somewhere maybe a5 depends yeah but from a practical point of view, it's quite annoying to play something like that, which why? Because you have no control play, literally. You have to uh, just wait, and from a psychological point of view, it's, it's terrible. Okay, let us continue. So, the guy from Mexico, I've played only one game against him and uh, three minutes, so it's gonna be very challenging. It's gonna be very challenging. Three minutes. I have to play faster. Let's go. So, Kasparov Petrosian system. A3. Very good one, in my opinion. Okay, E3. Let's just play C5. Can I play this way? Just wondering if it is all justified. Super risky though. All right, now d5 is playable for sure. So c4 is under attack. If cd5, I take on e2 and take on d5 with a piece. Again, trying to play against the isolated pawn. After knight to e5, of course, it would be great for me to take on c4, but there is uh, bishop to f3, so it doesn't work that way. 
anymore. Um, but we can ex exert some pressure on, on c4 again with the help of queen c8, but then cd5 solves white's problem. Okay, so what can we do? We can take on c4 with the bishop, probably. But then again, knight c4, d c4, and bishop to f3 is unclear, but then knight d5. Okay. So knight c4, uh, sorry, bishop c4, knight c4, d c4, bishop c4 gives white a pair of bishops. I think it's not good for black anyway. So knight b to d7, knight to c6 is annoying. Yeah, probably we have misplayed it a bit. Probably we have misplayed it a bit. Let's just go back to b7 to support uh, d5, to be able to take on c4, and to control c6, what is the most important thing now, I guess. So I can play knight to c6 to attack that knight. I can play knight to d7 to attack that knight, be not afraid of knight to c6 move, and so on and so forth. And white is not against uh, to play with the isolated pawn, okay. I'm also not against that, so let's take on c4. I expected something like bishop f3 instead of bishop e3, pinning my pawn at least. Uh, so. Now we can play knight to c6, I suppose, just fighting that knight. Trying to, again, simplify the things a bit, because the fewer pieces we have, the fewer chances our opponent has to create an attack. And this is what our opponent wants to do here since isolated pawn is a weakness and the weakness should be somehow compensated, right? There should be compensation. Normally, this compensation is some sort of attack on the king side. For that, of course, you need the knight on e5. It's no longer there. And this is good for us for black in this case. Okay, I want to try this move. And then bishop b7. And now I wanted just to bring my queen to d6. Everything is still under control, but I just wanted to have my bishop on b7 to control that a6 square because it's kind of vulnerable and white can use it in some cases. And now I also have an idea of, yeah, playing something like this. Wait a second, queen to c6 is also interesting with a similar idea. It's probably just the same, right? Yeah, pretty much. Just queen b8 here is fine. And queen to b7, so white is exchanging everything, but uh, I'm only 30 seconds on the clock. That's probably a big problem. I have to play much faster right now. Um, okay. Misplayed it everything. Misplayed it completely. Shit. Now I have an isolated pawn. Uh, stay there. Uh, 24 seconds on the clock really bad position in the sense of time on the clock okay let's grab a bit more space Looks like we're winning, right? But we were quite lucky here. Okay. All right. This is just a pure luck, I would say. Just a pure luck here. Uh, because I misplayed it somewhere around this moment when my opponent played uh, something to e5. So that was correct. I mean, in general, just simplifying stuff here was the correct strategy. But after bishop f4, I started playing like a moron, but mainly because I had only 30 seconds on the clock, right? 
So the bishop f4, what is the correct move? Obviously, uh, something like this. So just completing the uh, plan, right? So just knight d5, blockading the pawn on d4, maybe then playing something like the bishop to f6. It depends. For now, I want to grab the bishop on f4, and another uh, threat is just to take on c3 and then take on a3, for example. So what has to make a decision if something like knight d5 happens, then queen takes d5. And once again, it's a very typical position. Well, if compared to previous game where one had some problems with this isolated pawn, uh, well, the bishop is a bit more active, of course, uh, but uh, nevertheless. So it's still the same pattern. Okay, so let us continue. Spectre. Accept and finally white pieces because I'm a bit tired of playing with black here. Just playing with white in this game. Again, the main challenge now is uh, to start the game because. My opponents, for some reason, don't respond. Some are just uh, going away before I get the first chance to accept the challenge. So the thing is, after first three games against people I've never ever played before, I, I then take challenges in uh, yeah, just normal order. So the first challenge that came is being accepted. One by one. So, here we go. My opponent is not responding, so abort. Next one is the uh, Vikinga. Accept. Also with the increment, 3 plus 2. Nice that it's still, you know, white color. So, I didn't lose this because of abort the previous game. Very good. The question is again, if Wikinger actually starts the game. Um, good question. Five more seconds. One, two, three, four, five. No, abort. Okay. Next one is uh, Friedel. Except playing with white pieces still. They're gonna be Sicilian, I guess. Yep, Friedel usually plays Sicilian. So, what do we have today? E5, E6. What's gonna happen? Knight D7. All right. Interesting move. Let's also respond with interest in g4. And this pawn is protected, so if uh, black plays in like knight to c5, I'm kind of ready. Knight h6, okay. Let's play h4. Knight goes to c5. Should we just play f3, just like in English attack? The, the difference is that the bishop is on e2, not on h3, which is kind of typical square for it. I don't know. But knight is also not so often goes to c5. So I suppose maybe everything is justified here. Knight goes to e6. Intending to do what? To exchange my knight, I suppose. Okay, I'm not that against. I'll recapture with the queen here. Preparing castling, and I'll just castle. Now g5 is ready. And I think we should play it right now. We're better developed. Looks nice. Knight goes to h5. Is it really possible for Black to play it? 
like that because now I have a four attacking it. So bishop attacks the knight. I think the knight is lost simply. That is one of the advantages of having the bishop on e2. <laughs> In this particular case, it's really helpful, right? And e5 doesn't help, I just take f takes e5. Yeah, it's lost already, immediately. So black just underestimated uh, my play here completely. Uh, instead of playing knight to e6, I would have played b5. It's probably logical. Just intending b4, fighting for center, intending bishop to b7. Maybe e6 immediately, maybe e5. e5 makes little sense to me, because if knight f5, I would have played, yeah, either b5, intending to come up with some counterplay, and to develop the bishop like that here. Or maybe g6 followed by bishop g7, which is also a possibility here. So I, I'm still not playing g5 here because of h takes g5. Um, and my rook is heading on h1. So maybe g6 was also an, an option here. I don't know. But not 96, 94. It definitely helps only one side, white, in this particular case. All right. So the next one is uh, Hannes uh, again, not sure if, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Three minutes, it's a great challenge, I guess. And we're playing for the first time, right? Right. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. I think this guy asked for a game on chat several times tonight. So... Let's do it then. Okay, so I can take on e4. I can also play d5. Really wondering what is the best approach here. Oh, let's take there. It's probably a part of the series, right? Theory that I don't know. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's just attack e4. Okay, I think it's just absolutely uh, equal position. Just quite expectable from the Petrov defense, right? Just, just a draw or something. Oh my lord. Okay, let's see how we can actually make it a bit more interesting to play. So first of all, King f4. I expected bishop to d5, not bishop to f5. What we can do now? Can we actually do anything here? So e6 may be interesting, but I don't think it works right now. So first h4. Trying to grab some space. Um, now what? E6 now doesn't make sense. I think it's early anyway. So let's bring the work to G file. Nah, it's anyway nothing. Maybe something like rook h3, rook g3, rook g5, then g4 at some point, uh, having h5 in mind. Sort of that play. It's hard to achieve anything when you have uh, opposite colored bishops. And the king is correctly going to e6. All right. Well then, let's do what we wanted to do. Rook is on g5, ready for g4 stuff. So maybe another rook will go to h1 and then g4, and then h5, something like that. So opponent doesn't have active play for now. So this means we're fine with this play, right?
we have slightly more active keen here. This is probably our justification for trying to play something active here. Okay, c5, the idea being to play uh, so like b5 and then b4, right? So let's play a4 to stop it for one move and then just quickly run in with our stuff here. Now let's take that one. This brings us a pawn, or maybe not, maybe not really. C2 will drop, right? Yeah, it doesn't give us anything here doesn't give us anything. What should we play? Just h5, I think. Okay. G pawn is under pressure. Now we have a passer, which is good. But maybe it's not enough anyway for anything serious. Yeah, black is still fine here. There is absolutely nothing in White's position. Well, all right. So what is the idea now? There's just nothing here. Losing on time now. Yeah, lost on time. All right. Uh, black had bishop h5 because of king h5, rook h7. No, because of rook d5 check. I have seen that tactics. I've seen that tactics. It was not there because of this intermediate check. So you mean here at the moment, uh, bishop to d1, rook here. If bishop takes on h5, then Rook goes to d5 check, and I take the bishop next move, and black is losing. So, there is no way for black to take there. Yeah, nice. Uh, so, probably my plan was correct. I was trying to do everything I could in that position. Uh, to, Of course, it was, it was possible to, to claim a draw at any moment. Uh, but probably somewhere here, I missed that play based on my a4 I guess maybe a4 was itself not very good I created a um, target so maybe g4 immediately here was the right way to play and then if b5 I can always think of just playing a3 right I was probably a bit unnecessarily afraid of that b4 play. yeah just g4 immediately then we think about something similar yeah, like that. I don't know, something like h5 here. I'm not sure. So bishop h7, rook g7 and stuff. I have no idea. Yeah, so position was balanced and equal rights. Uh, even here, I think it's, it's absolutely equal and balanced, even though black is a pawn up, but I have super uh, dangerous passer. So, uh, but I lost some time. So absolutely valid result. So maybe here I made a mistake. I don't know. Could I play better chess in this position? No, I think, I think there is nothing. So takes, takes. Rook there, rook up. Yeah, super solid. 
There's absolutely nothing. Okay. Thanks for the game. Next one. Patrol of Defense. Very solid shit. <laughs> uh, Mam Company. Accept. This time, French. Rubenstein or something? I don't remember how it's called. I think yes. Oh. This gives me very pleasant position, I would say. Pair of bishops, this amazing pin. Uh, okay, I'll grab that one. Sorry. <laughs> the knight is pinned, right? Just come back to d4 now. Yeah. <sighs> that is a Rubenstein misplayed completely right from the start. All right, there is nothing to command, just just a serious blunder. Um, all right. Send wiper. Playing with black now. Italian or Evans, I don't know. Just Italian. All right. Let's try some experimental stuff. I want to try to bring my bishop to a super bad position on g6 after h3 and g4 if white dares to play <coughs> that thing. And then to try to survive it. <laughs> Sounds like stupid plan, but really want to try it. But why decided not to do that? Okay. Also acceptable. I want to put my queen on d6, although it may be not the right square because of bishop b5, let's say. Bishop b5 with the idea of knight c4. Now I would rather put it on e7 here. Still want to castle it here for some reason. Don't know why. Just because I decided to play this uh, experimentally. I mean, this game. But I don't think it's a good idea. So, castle and short should be preferred here, to be honest. All right, but white is playing it. Also, not the best way, I guess. What about knight a5 now? The idea being just to grab on d3 if uh, bishop goes away from a6 f1 diagonal. And just chase that bishop if it stays there. All right, this way. Didn't expect that move. Let's take the bishop. Chuck Pirat says Rubinstein was a great player. But never got the chance for a world championship match. Well, actually, Rubenstein is one of my favorite players ever. So, I do love his style. He's amazing. Indeed. All right, king b8, covering a7. b4. Should we react here? I think it's better for us to keep the position as is because. Otherwise, there is a huge risk of being checkmated. So let's bring the rook to d3. If b takes c5, then queen takes c5 is planned. If not bc5, then rook to d8. Doubling or tripling heavy pieces along the d-file. So rook there intending what? Something like b takes c5? I don't know. Let's see. Let's bring another rook to the game. 
Is there a shred of taking on b7 simply? Or something like that? Are we being checkmated? No, I don't think so. Or maybe we are, actually. Oh, God damn it. Yeah. Why not Queen C5? <laughs> Why not Queen C5? Okay. Okay. Let's start our attack. Feels like everything is under control here. Miss that completely. Uh, okay. Mm. Just a pure luck again. Just a pure luck. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I misplayed it several times in this game. Displayed it like an idiot, like a complete idiot. I think it, this game is just not for me anymore. Um, yeah, so somewhere here, I played rook d8 only because I thought I would just take on d2 whatever happens, right? Uh, so after rook d2, I noticed there was rook takes b7. And the problem is the following. So if I take with the king, and I have to, I think in this case, Queen to b5 is terrible for black. So if king there, then queen c6, followed by rook to b1. That is what actually stopped me from playing uh, what I wanted to play initially. But now I see that there is, even here, I have king to c8, and it's not so clear. Right? Right? Um, yeah, and if king goes to c8, I thought there is queen a6, and if king goes to d7, there is the simple knight takes d2. Well, that works. That works, um, but after queen to b5, and there, so it's hard to believe that white is not winning here, all right? Uh, so rook b1, king c8, queen a8. The difference is that in this case, if, oh, okay, queen a6 is still a correct check. Not queen a8 to be attacked after king d7, but queen a6 is the right way to play it, and then knight takes d2. But I mean, I'm a piece up here, right? So there is no checkmate. My goodness, I completely misplayed it and misunderstood it. So probably the rook d2 was correct. Yeah, and then when I uh, played bishop c8 instead, I suppose something like that should have been played to start with. And then everything else, like knight to b3 and so on. Yeah, completely misunderstood the position, M miscalculated it. All right, so there is uh, one more challenge from the guy I've already played today, so uh, I'm not going to play it. And the last game, I think, against uh, Neureiser. Accept and let's call it a day. Accept, play, and then let's call it a day. <laughs>
so who's Hubner? <laughs> what? What? Now it's hard to to make to draw conclusions. Sorry, uh, when you just enter the discussion somewhere in the middle of it. <laughs> so only <laughs> only German people are accepted, right? <laughs> of course not. It's just a coincidence that there are so many challenges from from Germans tonight. <laughs> So, accepted are only uh, premium members. <laughs> but yeah, tonight there are many challenges coming exactly from Germans. Or at least users that defined Germany as their country of origin. If we want to be accurate. Because who knows? Should we try Bishop G5 here? Or just, um, well, I don't know. This is also an interesting option. <laughs> Andre is German, says Dutch defender. I'm not German. <laughs> not at all. So uh, I just live in Germany. Yeah, but I'm not German. All right, bishop e7, h5. Yeah, that's what I wanted to play. So the question is uh, the stereotypical b3, bishop a3, knight a4 too slow here or just a preference? And I don't think that it is uh, actually good for now because there is queen a5 or something. Uh, but it's indeed the plan, so at some point it will happen for sure. That's a stupid move. My goodness. Why am I playing this like an idiot? Yeah, exactly. It's knight to d4. Just losing time here. Yeah, probably a good sign to stop the show. I mean, no surprises. Uh, it's the last game because, as you can see, I'm playing like, like a moron. Right now, I guess I can play this b3 simply. So there is no d4, queen a5, just bishop d2. It was like that a move ago as well, so I could have played b3. So the point here is just to keep position closed and fixed to prevent the activity of opponent's bishops. And then, as it was correctly mentioned, to start attacking this c5. But I just made the life much harder for myself because of, you know, this... Uh, bishop to sorry queen to e2 move giving my opponent like you know a temple <sighs> well at least my play was not entirely stupid so i achieved something in this position or at least i want to believe i did Okay, let's just grab the bishop with the knight and step back. So grab some space. Um, well, pawn structure is still better for me. And this is not dangerous for me whatsoever. Let's just protect the pawn on e5. I don't care about that bishop. Aha, that was the plan. All right, that's interesting. Just castle long. So in nine seconds, oh my god. Black will just tear me apart here, I think.
something like that was planned, right? Then knight g3, but queen h8 comes. No, okay. Now the knight should go there. That is where the knight belongs here. Attacking c5. And g5 is also my target. I should somehow attack opponent's weaknesses here in a smart way. It's not so simple when you have only... Uh, how many... 30 seconds on the clock. But we'll try our best here. And I have a feeling we will play with the increment or some, some sort of. All right. So now I want to jump to a5, obviously. I'm wondering how my opponent is going to solve this problem. Another potential idea is just to play f3 and bishop f2, keeping the bishop on the board. All right, pawn structure is fixed completely. Portion of good news, I believe. All right, this exchange is fine because my knight is much better than that stupid bishop. Yeah, my opponent has simplified the stuff, but I don't think it was correct simplification. Now position is absolutely lost. Um, from a from various points of view. Yeah, the rook is under attack. Queen a seven is coming. Rook to h eight is coming as well. So pawn structure is terrible, and this will not help. I'll just simplify everything the right way. And it's gonna be over now. Okay. It's gonna be over now. Yeah. I'm not going to checkmate my opponent, not necessarily. I'm just converting the stuff here easily. We could have captured that bishop, by the way. I'm not in a rush, though. Mm -hmm. Well, now I think it's time. Yeah. Time to resign. All right. OK, guys, thanks a lot for being with me this time. It was not very good from a technical point of view. It started with some uh, crashing. Uh, but anyway, I hope that we managed to have a good time. And uh, if you learned just a bit from this session, I'm happy because it is a um, the primary goal here, okay? So wish you all the best. Uh, stay healthy and safe and see you next week, hopefully. Bye-bye.